Hey guys, welcome back to another video at Jensen's Reptiles. So today we're going to be talking about something slightly different. We are going to be talking about how to treat a respiratory infection in royal pythons. So, this is Aki. She is my four-year-old royal python. Um, she has had an ongoing respiratory infection for the last two years. So, since I've had her, um, she came to me in a fairly, a fairly bad condition, to be honest. Um, I got her from a place that I, I really like and respect um, as far as their passion for animals go, but they're lacking in knowledge and uh, she wasn't shedding properly, um, she had a, a wheeze, it just wasn't great. So I took her to the vet as soon as I got her home and was advised to keep her at a slightly warmer temperature, make sure her humidity was not too high, not too low. Um, we'll come back to that in a moment. but. So she's been battling that for a little while now, and um, I've just taken her back to the vet, and it's been decided that she's going to go on a course of antibiotics. So later in the video, I'm going to show you how to inject uh, antibiotics into a reptile, a snake in particular, and we'll go from there. I'm going to let Aki go off and hide if she wants to now. Um, so the main thing is, if you notice any kind of wheezing or gurgling sounds coming from your animal, you really... Um, you want to be concerned about it. So snakes do get our eyes, royal pythons in particular, are fairly prone to them uh, when housed improperly. Um, and once they've got them, they can kind of stick around until you give them that little extra boost they need to kick it. Um, so any bubbling around the mouth or anything like that is an indication that it's a late stage respiratory infection. Aki here just has a, um, a slight wheeze, so it's really early stages. Um, so the main things you want to do, if you notice that your snakes have this, especially because larger body constrictors really have a hard time getting mucus out of their lungs, you want to make sure you have branches like this that kind of go down and up at around a 45 degree angle. This means the snake can either sit up here with the head resting down or sit down here with the head resting up. This means that they'll be able to shift mucus out of their lungs a lot easier um, and really just will give them a hand and uh, keeping fluids moving. So, another thing you want to do is uh, raise your temperatures a little bit. So you see Aki's temperatures over here are 29 degrees at the moment, that's with the door open. Um, usually they're around 32 on the warm end, which are a couple of degrees higher than necessary for a healthy snake, but for one that's uh, fighting an infection, it kickstarts them into having a fever and helps their body battle it. Same as it would for us to uh, keep warm when you have a cold or or something like that. So that's the first thing you want to be doing, just to make sure that they can pass uh, any mucus or any build up a bit more easily. If you see any mucus building up on the glass, um, your snake is usually in a late stage of having a respiratory infection, and I would advise taking them to the vet as soon as you can. Um, I'm just purely talking about precautionary measures here and uh, how to treat early stages. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is uh, how to use a fogger and a F10 together to uh, help treat a respiratory infection. This is all uh, vet's directions, so uh, don't, don't worry, I've not invented these uh, treatments myself. But I'll show you how to do that next, and then later on I'll show you how to uh, inject with antibiotics. Right, so now I'm going to show you how to make a nebulizer using a Reptifogger a plastic tub and some F10 disinfectant. So if, you're, um, if your reptile is in early stages of a respiratory infection then chances are that you know it's either 50-50 bacterial or viral. If it's bacterial F10 works really well in uh, staving off some of those early symptoms. Uh, it's not a perfect cure. It can, um, it can get rid of most of the bacteria if you use it properly. Uh, which is great, but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't advise it unless uh, unless your vet has said it's the right thing to do. I've used it for Aki because I've had the advice from two exotics vets. Um, I would use it in the future should any of my other snakes show signs of respiratory infection, but if it doesn't work after you know the two week mark and they're getting progressively worse, they're definitely going to need further medication. But I'll show you how to do this anyway. So you want your uh, Reptifogger here. 
and uh, your bottle of water, which you're going to put the F10 disinfectant into. So read the instructions on the back of your F10, make sure you dilute it properly. You can see it's pretty, uh, it's pretty clear there how much, you're, uh, how much you're using. So I'll put that in in just a moment. Then you are going to want to not break the machine, but uh, you're going to want to take the tube and you're going to put it through the hole that, uh, that you've made in the top of your container here. So I just uh, drill a hole in the top and then I put a grommet in to make sure that if I'm using the uh, box for transportation that there's no uh, massive hole in it. So I'll get it all set up and then I'll show you exactly how it works. So we're going to put two mils of F10 in here. I'm just using a uh, one milliliter syringe. So the first one's in already and that's the second one in now. And make sure you use a clean syringe every time you do that so you're not getting it mixed up with anything else in there. Um, snakes are masters of holding their breath so when you put your animal in the nebulization box you want to put them in for at least 20 minutes to make sure that they are breathing in something. Um, the more often you do this the more relaxed they'll be going into the box in most cases anyway. Um, not that I'm saying that you should do this you know just to get them used to it but <clears throat> kind of on Day three or four of nebulization, they'll chill out a bit and you'll see that they're breathing in a bit more. They're far more relaxed. Anyway, so um, everything's in there. So you're gonna turn it over, put it into the fogger, at which point lots of that will fill into the chamber there. And um, I'm gonna plug it in and get it going in the box so you can see how effective it is at uh, fogging up that box there. All right, so you take the uh, plastic grommet out or whatever you're using to seal the hole. You put your pipe in here and you turn the machine on. Simple as that. So you are going to see the fog coming out there and pretty soon the box is going to fill up. I do have air holes drilled into this box um, which is a little bit counterproductive so if you're doing this for the first time and uh, you've bought a new box for it I would just suggest making the one hole. These boxes aren't airtight anyway so you don't need to worry about anything uh, going wrong. Let's take this out so you can see um, the fog coming out there. And that's a mixture uh, with the F10 in, so they're going to be breathing that in. Any bacteria in the lungs is hopefully going to um, <clears throat> be killed off by that. And it's incredibly, incredibly safe to use in the right dosages, so um, I'd highly recommend that if you're seeing early stages of respiratory infections. But as I did say, <clears throat> Um, the advice of an exotic vet is above all the best thing so um, if, uh, if this doesn't work after a week and a half two weeks and you see anything getting worse with your animal please do take them to a vet it's not worth their suffering to uh, to keep trying things at home um, <clears throat> and that's exactly what I did with Aki uh, I took her to the vet and she's now on uh, some antibiotics and in a moment I'm going to show you how to uh, inject that but uh, that's how you make a nebulizer box. So if you ever need that in a pinch, then really easy to do. It's handy to have the fogger on hand anyway. So um, so yeah, that's it. I'll show you in just a moment uh, how to inject the antibiotics. So here's where I mucked up all the audio and I'm having to do a bit of a voiceover. So I'm gonna show you how to inject a, um, an antibiotic and I believe it's called cephalosporin. It's the one I'm using. Um, I don't like using Batril with my animals. It doesn't do a good job on their muscles. So here I am, I'm just finding a nice soft spot about a third of the way down the body, away from the spine. And I'm using a bit of surgical spirit to clean the area that I'm gonna inject in. So if you're injecting a larger snake, you want someone else to uh, hold them for you, just to keep them still. They tend to jump forwards as the needle goes in. Um, they do have really quite tough skin, so as you put the needle in, you're gonna to have to apply a fair amount of pressure, which you'll see in a moment. Um, as I was doing this, I completely forgot I was recording and decided that it would be a really good idea to block the entire camera with my hands. But you can see the amount of pressure I'm applying there. And that's really just to get the needle in past the scales. Once you've done that, you're going to angle it slightly upwards and inject. This is the point that the animal will try to move forwards. And that's why you have someone else holding them there so that all of the medication goes in before they can move away. Uh, cap back on the needle and then you dispose of it in a sharps container.